This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1714, House Rich and Cash Poor, by Mike Ballou of Eggstack.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Now let's get right to it and continue optimizing your life. House Rich and Cash Poor by Mike Ballou of Eggstack.com. Do you have substantial equity in your home, but worry that you may not have enough savings to enjoy retirement? If so, you're not alone. That's what it means to be house rich and cash poor. Owning a home is an important part of wealth building and a cornerstone of the American dream. However, as we age, some youthful aspirations like home ownership begin to feel like an albatross. Years of making mortgage payments and costly repairs takes its toll on our psyche. Our home that once made us beam with pride starts getting the side eye. Fortunately, there are several options at our disposal to deal with this matter. Let's look at each one and evaluate the advantages and disadvantages. Downsizing. When all of the children are grown and gone, it's just the two of you knocking around in that big house. Do you really need all that room? Downsizing to a smaller home has many advantages. For one, there's less area to heat and cool, so your utility bills are less. Costs such as property taxes and insurance reduce in proportion to the value of your home. The equity banked from downsizing can be used to have fun or supplement your living expenses. One of the cons of downsizing is the fact that a good portion of the equity goes to the process of buying and selling. To rid yourself of your current home, you have to pay a realtor commission and seller's closing costs. Plus, there are often repairs or upgrades needed to list the home. When you buy your new home, there are closing costs and moving expenses to pay. Reverse mortgage. Another possible solution to being house rich and cash poor is a reverse mortgage. If you're 62 years of age or older, you're eligible for a reverse mortgage. A reverse mortgage allows you to draw down the equity in your home and use it as you wish. Proceeds from a reverse mortgage are not taxed and they have no effect on Social Security or Medicare benefits. If you live longer than expected or market conditions change, the bank absorbs the loss. No debt is passed on to your heirs. The primary disadvantage of a reverse mortgage is that you are essentially married to your home, as in until death do us part. Forget about moving to a new location or chasing your children around the country to be near your grandkids. We've just touched the surface here. If you're interested in learning more, check out our article entitled, How Does a Reverse Mortgage Work? Investment Property. If you wanna really shake things up, you could turn your home into an investment property, move into an apartment or RV and lease your home. Or you could turn it into a vacation rental like an Airbnb you may end up with more headaches than you know what to do with, but there will never be a dull moment. Most retirees are looking to offload responsibility, not take on more. However, as crazy as this idea sounds, it's actually the most likely to pass on the full value of your home to your heirs. If this piques your interest, check out our articles titled Investment Property and Top Considerations for Becoming an Airbnb Host. Conclusion. Life is funny. When we start out, we can't wait to quit renting and buy a house. As we get older, the thought of leaving home ownership behind and renting feels like a breath of fresh air. Let somebody else deal with all the hassles. When something breaks, you just make a call. Actually, that is more fantasy than reality. Unless you time it just right, renting and retirement is a great way to outlive your savings and go broke. Monthly rent payments are significantly higher than paying insurance and property tax on a paid off home. Plus, when you rent, you're at the mercy of the landlord who can raise your rent or kick you to the curb anytime they please. Unless you rent a house, you have to lug groceries and trash up and down stairs in the rain and snow. There is no doggy door or fenced in backyard. So every time nature calls, you have to take Fido for a walk to an unpleasant patch of grass where everyone else walks their dog. If that's not enough, you have to listen to your neighbors fight and make up, think about it. Retirees who yearn to ditch their home and rent have simply forgotten what it's like to rent. 
A better way to deal with homeowner burnout and age-related issues is to stay in your home and pay people to do things for you. Almost anything you can imagine can be outsourced. Lawn mowing, snow blowing, painting, maid service, pressure washing, pest control, repairs and maintenance. Think you can't afford it? Except for maid service, you pay for all of that when you rent an apartment or condo plus profit. It's built into the monthly rent. You can preempt unpleasant emergencies by being proactive about maintenance. Every 15 years, replace your home's roof, water heater, and heating and cooling system. Sound too expensive? It does, but if you break it down into its monthly equivalent, it really isn't. A roof is $15,000, a water heater is $1,000, and a new heating and cooling system is $7,000. That's $23,000. Set aside $120 each month, That's $23,000 divided by 15 years divided by 12 months, and you'll have the money when you need it. Finally, consider this. If you're house rich and cash poor, at least you're rich in something. That's a first world problem that much of the rest of the world would be happy to have. You just listened to the post titled House Rich and Cash Poor by Mike Ballou of eggstack.com. One of the most challenging parts of real estate investing is finding a deal that actually meets your investment goals. You've probably spent a ton of time scouring properties and plugging the numbers into spreadsheets only to be disappointed that it didn't check out. Investing in real estate can quickly become a full-time job. The team over at Awning is trying to change that. Awning is a real estate investing platform that really puts the passive back into passive income. They're a brokerage just like you're used to except they have technology superpowers to help get the most out of your investment. Awning takes in your investment goals, pairs you with a dedicated advisor, and uses some pretty incredible technology to find and surface the best opportunities for you as soon as they become available. Awning's platform shows you everything you could possibly wanna know, from rental and appreciation estimates, neighborhood trends, school scores, and more. If you're looking to supercharge your investment search and want to close on better deals while investing less time, give Awning a try. Head over to awning.com slash OFD to start fast-tracking your real estate investing process. That's A-W-N-I-N-G dot com slash OFD. This article reminds me of an email I got from a listener who was questioning if she had enough to retire. While she had over a million dollars, a large majority of that was in her house so she couldn't really live off that in retirement unless she sold the house. I like the advice from my friend Frank Vasquez over at Risk Parity Radio, who recommends to have no more than 10 to 20% of your net worth in your residence so that you can put the bulk of your money into income-producing assets. On another note, I did some reading recently on reverse mortgages, and it sounds to me like this is a last resort option that only makes sense for people with certain unique circumstances. One of the things that I read that gave me pause is that the reverse mortgage must be repaid when the borrower dies, permanently moves out, or sells the home. And you're accumulating interest through the life of the loan that eventually needs to be paid back. So if you wanna leave your home to your children, for example, having a reverse mortgage on that property could cause problems if your heirs don't have the funds needed to pay off the loan. Another thing to consider is that in order to benefit from the reverse mortgage, you need to be healthy enough to continue living in your home. If an individual's health declines to the point where they must relocate to a treatment facility, the loan must be repaid in full. So a reverse mortgage might not be the best long-term strategy for someone who has growing health concerns as they age. And that should do it for today. Have a happy rest of your day, and I'll see you on the Friday show tomorrow, where your optimal life awaits.